Hello everybody, welcome back to Victoria 2 is the King Empire in our Rising Dragon campaign, or Roaring Dragons, my bad. Um, anyways, we are building up more armies because while we were at war we were with Russia, we were trying to get more troops, but, well, that war's over because we realized that's not worth it fighting over just with one province of 30,000 people with only cotton in it, considering we have, let's see, we have quite a bit of cotton. Maybe not nearly as much as I thought, but I mean, these places with 1.55 million people is producing a heck of a lot more cotton than that place, Port Arthur. And plus we got the benefit of getting more research points from that war, uh, because we did get to what Western influences. It does make our population a bit more militant, a bit more conscious, um, but it does give us an extra research point to work with which is going to be a lot more useful than just keeping that one province. So I'm totally fine at that. It's a little bit of prestige loss, but we will be fine overall. It looks like our intellectuals is at 2.15 in our most populous province. So let's go ahead and remove that and send it over here. 2.38 right now. Let's see what our... What's, how is it going over here? So we're making... We're at 4 point... Well, 4,200... And we're going for this one for 8,000 points. And our goal next is to actually go for Dynam. Is this a satellite of Dynam? Yes, it is. I don't think it's going to have any particular issues. What's this state like? There's only one state left for us to conquer here. So we should be able to conquer them outright. I moved all of our troops down here because I didn't want to reorganize them. I want to get rid of all of these irregular troops. Since they are going to ultimately just be completely useless to us. Uh, this army. Let's see what we can do. Let's combine these guys. See if we can get another army built. Uh, you as well. You're totally fine. You are mostly fine. Maybe you two can sort of combine a bit and try to figure that out. Uh, disband you. Disband you. Disband you. So we are kind of over the naval limit. I don't think we can actually build any more naval ports, can we? Simply because we do not have the technology to do so. Okay. Uh, you are also irregulars. Let's get rid of you. So if we could have a much better... Um, army composition we can probably do a much better job of fighting off any western powers who attack us that's all fine and you have a ton of regulars as well let's get rid of you guys and this entire army all right army just shrunk by about half but it'll be fine And these guys are all over here already. So let's go ahead. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, this is a good army. Let's see about this one. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is now a good army. Thinking of, let's just switch you two to reinforce this army. And our fleet is right here. So let's go see if we can get this guy up here. Same with you guys. That should be April. Yep, we can justify it. And we can go ahead, either annex them completely or annex to a substate. Which we could actually annex them to Yunnan. Which might be fine because they're going to be annexed the moment we westernize anyways. So let's, well actually we want to annex them personally because if we annex them ourselves, then we get the research points of benefit. How close are we getting? No, probably a fair distance away. So let's see, what are these other nations like? 10%, 10%, 20% for Dynam. Japan's at 45%, we're only at 25%. So let's continue going for this. We're gonna go ahead and annex Dynam ourselves and hopefully it's 63 days. We don't get discovered right away. 
In fact, I'm going to save it. I don't like save scumming. In fact, I don't ever really do it, but just in case. It looks like it's a good start so far. We haven't been discovered immediately. Sometimes that happens. Like the first or second day, you just get discovered. All right, looks like those troops have been transferred to the main shore. Uh, it's got 19 infamy. We are an uncivilized nation, so they might just not care. The Heavenly Kingdom is getting its cores. Hopefully it'll be fine. Right, this army is good. Foreign trading posts. Um, I don't see any benefits for us. What is this actually? I just saw some decisions. Interesting. So we could actually inherit Ryuku. Really? I thought that was just a Japanese thing. Well, that's interesting. So if we civilize quicker than well, Japan can actually form, we might be able to get this and become China. Um, okay. Are any of these even good? Search points minus fire minus minus ten percent minus twenty percent. So we'd rather have this one simply for the research point bonus. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we have an actual current modifier. We have tradition, which gives us minus 25% research points. Got two cavalry over here. Uh, let's go send you guys here. Send you down there and. You have a ton of infantry, but no cavalry. But we have a ton of troops right here. Yep, we do. So let's keep working this out. Are we still building troops, though? Yes, we are. That's one more army. Send you guys here. You guys can actually come up here to join that army. Vietnamese menace, how far are we from 70%? So 70 days. So I'm thinking once we drop below 30, we'll just go ahead and declare war. Looks like the UK, did they take this territory? I don't remember them usually having this. It doesn't say they're at peace with them or anything. British War of Ottoman Freedom against Egypt. Interesting. The Oriental Crisis between, I'm assuming, is Egypt and the Ottomans. The U.S. has not actually gone to... Well, it's only 1843. Never mind. But usually they actually colonize this. Did they not colonize it this time? Or is this how it normally is? No. We won't take it. Head jazz. Okay. I right, get one more army. You guys come down there. Hmm. 
Well, it's probably fine regardless. I was thinking about we could wait until we get that other um, bonus for conquering. But maybe SBS to hold off on that. So once we get these guys, let's go ahead and go for Siam then. They don't have, I guess they're cordial with the British. I'd rather not get the British involved. But I know in one of the comments from the first video, I don't remember who it was, but they mentioned that going against the British might actually be fairly easy if you know how to handle the war and make sure you kill off their fleets. Which you don't really have much of a fleet to speak of in the first place. But we can try building some. Um, get rid of some transports. Because we don't need all of these. Yeah. Build like, what, six? No, seven would be the right number. And let's go ahead and declare war. So conquest, um, call allies. Yes. Yeah. Should be a quick war. So let's send you guys down this way. You go this way. You go here, here, or no, here. You go here. I think our armies should be better. Oh, they're just going to run through. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Ryuku wants ally again. Jahor wants actually ally. Maybe not. Am I actually... Because which countries are civilized down here? Which only Lanfang has 15%. They'd be fairly easy to take out, though. Looks like Manchuria is going to be down there. Do we have nobody? Oh, you're going down there. Cool. This should be a quick war. Alright, and where are we at? So Burma actually joined in the war. It's 11 war score to take something, though. Should we risk it? So they are at a 10% civilization level. They're not... Well, hmm. Probably best to be patient in this case. Um, Burma will not accept any type of peace. So let's go ahead and send you guys. First, to deal with that army, I'll send... Well, actually, I can just send these guys. It's all mountainous. Not ideal, but we'll make do. But yeah, well, if we do end up going to war, it would be good for us to just occupy these territories and let the British throw their troops at us. So let us annex them, and they're only negotiating for themselves. Alright. That's 8,000 exactly. Let's take this. Now we're at 35%. And they got peace right away. Okay, cool. So now we got our lands connected down here. That's kind of cool. Making it inroads into Southeast Asia. It might be a little bit of sitting around. Because there's not really going to be much for us to do at this point. Besides just sitting around. So let's just kind of wait it out. Put you guys like this, I think. Well, one of you can move over there. I'll keep you here. Um, I need more troops to be built. So we have three more infantry. We do need one more cavalry, and then we'll just kind of keep building more troops. Um, then we just need, what, 24? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay. 
Uh, Abyssini, I do not care. You're way too far away from me. Um, okay, so... Looks like we do have some money issues. Based off of what? What's costing us money? Is it building new ships? Building more troops, that's probably what it is. Let's kind of hold it out and see how it goes. Should be temporary. There we go. There's more troops. Or trip. Ah, ships. There's no rally point either. So let's have you guys. I don't think we have any ports, do we? There was Port Arthur, but it looks like that was probably just built by them, just barely. Um, You head here. Let's make you a rally point for our Navy ships. And hopefully I'll be strong enough to take out any British fleets that come our way. We don't even have any admirals, do we? So we do have a plus three attack general I just barely saw there. Which is great for us. There are 75%, we're at 35%. Did Blanc Prabang or Cambodia? Was it Cambodia? I think it was Cambodia. So they automatically became free the moment that we conquered Dynam. Hmm. So Lan Fong is the only other nation in the area that seems to have any decent levels of civilization, plus a Sikh Empire, but Sikh Empire is blocked by the mountain passes. So there's not much we can do about it in the first place, unfortunately. Great. So what does this do? So, oh, increase pop militancy. While this does the same. So I don't know how bad it. I mean, we have nine point ninety nine consciousness. Granted, I did so. What I've been doing between our last little series and this current one is doing a bunch of different updates on the mod itself. And one of the things I did was um, I changed the values for our rebellion threshold. And so rebellions are less likely to happen unless you have a really, really high militancy. So I feel like it kind of makes it a little bit more realistic because, I mean, who rebels? I mean, you have to have some really high militancy to rebel. And plus, the way that Victoria 2 works is that I feel like rebellions happen all too frequently. Like, I got to the point when I was doing one of my test runs uh, for the Novus Imperium Romanum uh, campaign I was developing. And it was just constant and constant rebellions, which is why I kind of changed the value itself initially anyways. But I might have to kind of mess around with it a little bit more to see if there's ever rebels. But as far as westernizing goes... Chances are we might not really get any reactionaries uh, who will spawn. So we need to fix this. Could decrease military spending. Um, education efficiency looks like it's the biggest issue right now. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Could lower that slightly. And maybe raise taxes slightly. Or maybe raise tariffs slightly. That seems a little bit, you know, a little bit better. I think I had all those fleets because I wanted to attack Japan, didn't I? But in order to do that, well, I mean, decrease your relationship really quick. If I were to justify war, I would acquire substate regions. Only five. Um, infamy. Hmm. I'm not against. I think we could potentially win if we just throw a ton of troops at it. I'll look at all these troops. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
which is actually what I'm considering. Do an early expansion into the Japanese Isles. Well, it could be interesting to see one of my super nations actually spawn in this playthrough. Uh, I don't think I want it to be Japan because <laughs> all their goals are literally against China early game. So hopefully we can avoid that. Um, otherwise, I don't know if the Nova's Imperium of Modern will spawn in and I think I may have disabled the NAU from spawning in as well because there was some bugs I was working out. So I have to fix that. Um, but currently, I'm pretty much almost done. And, um, I don't think anyone's going to join. Nobody should join. Yeah, nobody joined. Um, but currently, I'm almost done with the Nova Superior Romanum. I just need to do like some like two or three more final events. And then I'd say that campaign is pretty much done. And I'll do a series right after this one for it. But immediately afterwards, I'm thinking about returning to the USA. I know to play through relatively recently several months ago but so I've been doing a bunch of history courses right now in school a um, bunch of other upper division credits and one of them is like Latin American history uh, one of them is world military history one of them is the US history from I believe 1870 till about I think 1950 if I remember correctly so around that time period it's like those three history courses I'm taking. And the Latin American history course I'm taking actually has or talks about this event that happened, I think, in the 40s, 1840s, where I think it was William Walker was this American who wanted to annex Nicaragua as part of the USA to be a slave state. And so he went down there. And he actually overthrew the government. And he was in control for about a year or two before, I think it was Vanderbilt, the rich guy, <laughs> who actually overthrew him or sponsored rebellions against him and overthrew him. And so that never became a thing. But it's possible to have an event series where we could have more direct US backing for Walker and make it so that they have an event chain where the U.S. can early or annex early Nicaragua and potentially the rest of Central America. In addition with what we're going to be doing with Mexico in the campaign. And plus there's multiple instances. Um, I believe right after the Civil War was... Uh, so the, because the British had supported the CSA, the USA had actually been looking for or reparations against the British. I think it was something like $3 billion um dollars or pounds or whatever currency was being used to negotiate there in that time they settled for three million which isn't that or like maybe it's 30 million uh, which isn't that much considering what their original deal was but it's either the usa was asking for three billion or the rights of canada and so it could be interesting to have some sort of event chain where the usa has the option to go to the british for reparations against them for supporting the CSA and having it so they can obviously demand um, Canada, they either demand Canada or money. Um, if the British declined, the USA could settle on the 3 million or they can push it and get claims on all of Canada and push it to war and basically annex Canada from that point on. So there's several different divergence points in our actual history. The USA could have taken up pretty much most of North America by the 70s, 1870s, which would be very interesting to reflect that in um, a Victoria 2 series. So I don't know how interested you guys are in that, but that's my plan. And I've already written out a bunch of um, templates for events, um, event chains or whatnot, because I think a USA run through is really interesting. It's one of the few countries, well, there's many countries actually, in this time period that has a massively interesting history dynamic and that could have changed so much um, the same thing goes for Prussia because this is the moment that Prussia actually became Germany so that's a really interesting run through to play through same with Japan is also pretty interesting uh, with this time period but that's just me spouting off ideas for the future of the mod so hopefully that interests at least some of you 
Uh, let's get more troops, because we are going to be, of course, invading Japan soon. Uh, how about 24, and then we'll get 48 more. Which I believe should be about 72 in total, right? Go up to 72. Just me spam clicking. I don't care where they're built, as long as they're built. So yeah, I think our next goal is definitely going to be go for Japan. Hoping that by taking sub-states we get more research points. Uh, Vicinia, nope. Because if we can take, of course, Kyushu and maybe Chugoku, those would be great territories to take over. Because Japan itself looks like it only has, what, four, five, six, seven, eight states in total. I mean, it's a, probably a fairly easy place to go ahead and conquer in the long run. But we have to deal with uh, the Heavenly Kingdom first of all, at some point. Uh, it's not Heavenly Kingdom core, well, Heavenly Kingdom will be in its core, West Hu Bay. I don't know how big this rebellion is going to end up being. That's Heavenly Kingdom's flag. Looks like it might be a fairly big one. Well, I only see it down here so far. And a bit up here. Looks like a lot of this right here is going to be their territory. Which actually is a lot of my populous states. How many troops were recruiting from that area? A decent amount. So perhaps we should focus on recruiting Nanfaran troops. It doesn't really matter that much, I suppose, because these areas, well, actually, it does obviously matter. We'll see. All right, how are you guys looking? Can we split you up yet? Looks like we can. The Heavenly Kingdom is going to be our big sort of civil war event. I mean, I've never seen a playthrough where they actually win, but the same goes with the CSA. But it could be like, my play style is obviously not your typical China play style, so it could make it a lot worse, aggravate the issue of the Heavenly Kingdom, or just, it'll still be meh. Where we have three search points, 3200, okay. And our fleet can actually support even more troops, just because we took um, the rest of Vietnam there. Uh, so let's get five more frigates. There we go. Oh, and we are in debt. We really probably don't need to spend that much on our defense spending, do we? Because what that does is kind of make it so we have more possible brigades. But, I mean, we don't really need that much in the first place. What is going on? I mean, our education is really taking a toll on us. Probably because of the amount of intellectuals we have. Um, 85? I really don't want to do that, but... It only decreases about, like, by point 
zero zero like twenty. It's not that much. Yeah, we're definitely getting a much bigger army now. Two, three. It would be kind of better if we had four cavalry per army. I'm thinking about it. Get it like an equal flanking sort of thing going. That'd be the most efficient use of our cavalry because they do have two maneuver. Of course, it's probably fine. I don't. It doesn't really matter that much. We should be fine. What other technology do we actually get access to? We got the command principle, which increases our morale and military tactics. That's pretty good, actually. Um, what other techs should we go for? Perhaps military constructions. What does post-Napoleonic thought do? Gives us digging efficiency, but we kind of want artillery if at all possible. Military staff system or bronze level, level ah, bronze muzzle loaded artillery. If that's a thing for us, that's military staff system. Intro, oh, that's just technology, not an actual. Okay, um, pretty much only this is gonna, because military staff system will give us all of the SARS. Oh, wait. But we can't get it because we're not civilized. Blast sucks. Okay, doesn't matter then. Hong. Oh, maybe on the so called Heavenly Kingdom has been given a name, Hong Chuan. A former farmer who attempted at the civil service examinations in Sao and failed, he has now become a charismatic visionary, take advantage of anti Manchu sentiment in the South. Some say he's crazy and mad, but regardless, he's an ancient looking dynasty and his words are finding eager ears. Of course, they are. He will not threaten us. Actually, he will totally threaten us, but it's fine increase our education efficiency a little bit yep now but it's 3.0 or 0 0.306 so it is going up you can totally tell it's going up so it's slow but sure yeah and yeah, we have more units See, all these guys are going to get ready. See, there's all new armies that are going to hopefully go into Japan soon. Now, these are really smaller armies, but it's fine. And why do you... Are you losing troops? Why? Now you're not. I don't know what happened there. Strange. Yeah, now it's recovering. I don't know what happened. Alright, so I think we are going to end this episode here. Um, next time we are going to plan on going into China and probably our civil war will happen as well. This episode was basically, we just finished off um, Vietnam slash Dainam and we built up our armies significantly. Uh, we do not want to ally with you. So hopefully things are going to start shooting forward relatively soon as soon as we start getting some more text here in fact we might actually look forward or into getting some more of these economic reforms i think those might actually be pretty good to go for next unless we want some more research points bonus when conquering kind of depends on whether we get more or whether that's kind of what our main two is going to be anyways so thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye as always, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content just like this and more frequent uploads. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time.